if you are following a program and you've been given it by a coach or a nutritionist or a PT and you're following it because that's what they told you to, you are no better off than the person that is, you know, doesn't know what's next because you're blindly following something without ultimately understanding what your next steps really are. Okay. So what I want to go through today is we've got a good little presentation that I'm quite excited to go through with you because it starts to give you a bit of an understanding on really that that very thing is asking the bigger questions, knowing what your next steps ultimately should be. And if you're stuck in this idea of a, a constant sort of dip and dive between the bulking and cutting, trying to you know, add that muscle tissue on so you know you feel strong, fit and confident, but then also trying to keep that fat at bay. How can we do both? How can we ultimately win uh, with that whole process, right? So like I said today, the big focus is removing this cutting versus bulking fallacy, really understanding what we can do to move forward for your training, your nutrition, and ultimately really feeling good in your own skin, okay? So the biggest question I want to ask is really your reflection tool, and this should be really valuable as we dive in uh, deeper, is getting an awareness of where you feel like you are on this chart, okay? So ultimately, we want you all to be at the top right of this chart. We want you to be consistent, we want you to be focused. We don't, ultimately, if you're watching this video, you're probably not in the bottom left. You're nor consistent nor focused. You, you're at least taking some time to understand what your next steps are. Hopefully, you're getting some training in, but ultimately, that bottom left would be you're not training at all. You're not doing any research. You're not understanding what next steps are. And ultimately, what's really missing here is you don't have a strong enough why to move forward. That's what you've got to really build for. Like, why on earth do you want to improve your body, how you feel, your energy? Yes, I know it's going to make you show up better. I could give you 10 reasons, a thousand reasons why showing up better, feeling great in your own skin is going to be helpful in areas of your life, but ultimately needs to really resonate with you. You've got to have a why to move out of that bottom left, okay? If we go up further, then the top left is going to be you're consistent, but you're not focused, right? So you're getting some training in, you're, you know, you keep doing your classes, you keep, you know, going to the gym with your same schedule, you're getting that consistency of your three, four, five, maybe more sessions a week, but you don't really understand what those mechanisms are. You don't know what your next steps are, you haven't researched where to really go, and if you do, you kind of feel like it just becomes more confusing, right? So there's a lot of people up in that top left, and if you're in these boxes, let me know. Are you in top left? Are you in bottom right? Let me know where you're at. Okay, bottom right is where you're focused. You're taking a lot of time to research on YouTube and Facebook and these groups and you know every little magazine and, and ad that comes up, but you're not consistent, right? You're, you're bombarded by so much information, so you don't know what those next steps are. And you, you get in you know, one, two, maybe three sessions if you're lucky, and you don't have that consistency around training. We want to get you out of that rut too, right? Because if, even if you're doing the perfect thing, but you're doing it on such an infrequent basis, we can't really get you to move forward, right? So it is really these balance between the two. We want to bring back that consistency to really feel like it becomes part of your day. It becomes part of who you are. It's just something of what you do. When you get that level of identity and habit, of habitual focus around how to move forward, you're going to win, okay? But if you add that on top, you understand the mechanisms behind how to move forward. You understand why you're doing what you're doing. Now you get that second layer that really ultimately closes the gap between goal setting and goal achievement. When you set those targets, but you know those consistent steps you need to put in place to move forward, now you will win, okay? Hope that was helpful. Let me know where you're at, okay? Comment where you in. Where were you on those on that chart, okay? So, what I want to dive in, as I said today, was really getting an awareness around this bulking versus cutting cycle. Why it's a problem, why I want you to get away from it, right? And if you don't understand what I mean, it's really the understanding if you want to put on size, you want to put on muscle, you're going to increase your calories and you're going to train, uh, you know, maybe more strength focus to add size. If you're trying to drop body fat, you're simply going to drop calories and add in a bit more cardio to drop the fat. And I want to really dive into where that starts to fall apart and why it's no longer serving you. Now, if you're 18 or 20 years old and you're just getting into training, go for it, try it out, see how you go. You might have enough of a hormonal structure and in in for it to still work, to still move forward. So knock yourself out, see how you go. But if you feel like things aren't responding the same way, they're not either working like they used to, or you feel like you're just putting so much work in and you're ultimately not getting the result from what, you, what you're out. Okay, and that's what I want to really dive into. And the reason this is going to be a really interesting topic and what I want to go into today is because this was me for a long time, right? Through my 20s, trying to get an awareness of you know, how to put on a little bit more muscle and keep the body fat at bay. The last thing you want to do is be this big blown up balloon and re think that there's some muscle further down and you, you end up putting all this weight on. You look at the scales, yep, I'm putting some weight on, 90, 95, 100, I'm starting to put some weight on. And then you drop the body fat, you realize you're back to where you started, but you've just got more imbalances, right? You've got bigger front delts, you've got 
uh, more quads, but you've got no hamstrings, no rear delts, whatever, right? That you're not getting that balance and you feel like you constantly go up and down, you fluctuate with your weight, you put all this work into eating more to increase the size. And when you start dropping things back down, you feel sluggish, your energy goes downhill and you end up pretty much where you started, right? So I want to get rid of this fluctuation and I want to understand how you can move forward in a more intelligent way that's obviously more healthy, more enjoyable, and really makes more sense, okay? So what I want to dive into, and this is going to give you a really good awareness. I use this every week uh, nearly with, with our private clients to really get an understanding around this. If you can understand this, you will start to sift through, through so much bullshit on the internet because you understand the basic function of our body. If you understand how energy works in the body, understand how we expend that energy, you'll start to get a very clear understanding of what happens next, okay? So what we can break this down into is these four portions, okay? So we've got our basal metabolic rate, which is ultimately how, our, how much our body is going to burn at rest, okay? We've got the gray area, the NEAT, which is our non-exercise activity. That's you walking to work. That's you doing your normal things. You're cleaning, you're walking, you're, uh, you know, whatever you do in your normal day, okay? You've got the TEF, which is your thermic effect from food, which is really important. I want to dive into a little bit. And then you've got your exercise activity thermogenesis. Which one's the smallest on that chart, team? It's your exercise, right? So, if you're just getting on the treadmill and you're counting your calories or you're doing your 10,000 steps, which to be honest is actually a made up number by someone in Japan who was trying to sell a, sell a watch tracker, it's really not important. <laughs> As we want to understand that if you're simply getting on a treadmill to count your calories, you're wasting your time. Okay, if we can really start to look at deeper at how to get your body up regulated, and you know, you know, this is a big focus if you've been around a while with what I talk about is how can you upregulate the way your body works? And the reason that's so important is because it dives into this better metabolic rate, this getting this bit increased. If we can upgrade what your body burns at rest, now we're winning, okay? The other aspect that I wanna tie into today is understanding this thermic effect on food is massive, right? It's even bigger than that exercise portion. It's gonna be one of these aspects that really can be a prime mover in, in moving forward is we're fasting, I'm not against it. I wanna make sure that you know I have done things in the past where it is certainly helpful in order to improve your digestion if we do it on a regular basis. And what I mean by that is maybe, maybe a monthly basis, quarterly basis, whatever it works to add it in. If you're doing it every day, you are missing out on this very chunk of your ability to burn more energy, okay? If you're only eating once a day or twice a day and you're really leaving out a big portion of this, your thermic effect of food is going to drop. It's going to tank, okay? The reason for that is by you digesting food more regularly, increasing this frequency of meals you're eating, you're now increasing the thermic effect. You're allowing your body to digest meals in smaller quantities rather than a massive meal once a day that your body has to slog away at until it's finally decided to give up and store the extra body fat, okay? Fasting in the short term works because you're, you're restricting calories, right? Anything, regardless of whether you're eating cheesecakes or apples, if you restrict your calories in the short term, 80 to 90% of people will still drop body fat. The other 20 to 10% are typically because they've got such a high toxic load in their body that their body's so stubborn it will hold on to it, okay? And this is where we're really going is, is really interesting. But that aspect around that thermic effect of food is if you can eat more frequently throughout the day, you know, within reason, it's going to help with this thermic effect on food. It's better in our digestive system. We can increase our metabolism and allow our body to actually eat more and burn more as well. Okay, so what I mean within reason, if you're going over six, seven meals a day, one, it's not really realistic. And two, uh, it's kind of getting onto the aspect where you're not giving your body time to actually allow, you're kind of stacking food on top of food, you're not giving that digestive system a bit of break. So there has to be a balance, but if you're doing four or five meals a day, it's gonna be a really, really nice big mix to make the most of this thermic effect on food, okay? Now the other part port to this part to this metabolic rate is understanding that big yellow chunk is really brought into account with your gut health, your hormones, it's gonna come back into your weight training aspect, right? So weight training isn't technically gonna come so much under the exercise activity thermogenesis. Yes, you're gonna burn calories in the workout you're doing, but if we're effectively contracting muscles, breaking down tissue, it's more the recovery aspect over that 24, 48 hours, which creates that afterburn effect, which creates that body's ability to really burn more energy long-term, which is ultimately gonna increase this metabolic rate, okay? And that's the shift I want you to make. Rather than jumping around in your, in your group class or doing your work on the treadmill, we want to understand if we can really build a base of training the right way, we can actually upgrade the biggest portion of this whole aspect, okay? If you can add that in, it's gonna make a drastic difference to your body's ability to drop body fat and feel 
100%, okay? That's gonna be a big one. If you understand that and that's all you take away from today, you're really gonna win, you're gonna move forward, okay? I hope that was helpful. Let me know what you took away from that. The next part, so what we're gonna dive into, obviously coming back to the bulk versus cut cycle, I've kinda of got on a tangent, but I think it's gonna be really helpful. So the problem number one with this bulking versus cutting uh, general understanding is really this, this awareness that most people think that it's just going to be, as, as you've seen, we've just broken down why, you know, assuming calories are just equal depending on regardless of the person is something that's going to be flawed. Okay. How much, how I digest, digest that food is going to be very different on you. Whether it's going to be gut health, it's going to be a food intolerances, it's going to be simply preference, it's going to be what state we eat it in, it's going to be very, very different. Okay. So understanding all these mechanisms is ultimately at the end of the day, how our body burns that calorie, whether it comes from a cheesecake or a steak, is going to be a very different response. Okay. So understanding there's a lot more to it than just those calories. And if you're just pushing calories up, regardless of what that focus in, you need to understand how to get our body moving forward. If you want to build muscle, there's a lot more to it than simply putting yourself in a surplus. As with dropping weights, you know that it just putting things in a surplus, either one, it works for the short term and you back yourself into a corner, or two, your body's so stubborn holding onto this body fat because of this high toxic load that you'll find you just drop your metabolism, you still keep the body fat, and you, let, you keep yourself in a worse off position. Okay. The other aspect to this is it assumes training is equal, right? Do more, you'll burn more. If you Put more strength training in, you build muscle. If you add more cardio, you'll burn fat, right? It really doesn't work that way. And understanding that different training styles will make a drastic difference on how your body responds as well. An example of that could be if we're doing more strength training, we could get more of a central nervous system response. You'll see yourself get stronger, but your body's ability to use carbohydrates is going to be pretty low, right? We're not going to need as much in our diet. Whereas if we're doing more metabolic work, we're really focusing on pumps, we're focused on cell swelling, we're focused on... Um, this lactic acid response from a muscle, so like that burn you get in the muscle, we might find that you actually burn through a lot more carbohydrate, right? It's gonna make a big, big difference. So how you're training should also dictate how, or, or at least they should be correlated with how you eat also. Now a big aspect to this, whether we, and I'm gonna really tie this together as to what we focus on with our coaching clients is understanding this aspect of stress, lifestyle, and sleep, right? If you're not taking that into account with how you're training and eating, you're really missing a massive piece of the pie, okay? If you're stressed and your cortisol's high, and I'm gonna dive into that, it's gonna cause your body to hold onto that body fat. You're gonna be breaking down more tissue. Your insulin sensitivity is gonna go, go through, the, uh, is gonna drop, your resistance is gonna be there, right? And ultimately, if you don't feel like that lifestyle is on track, you shouldn't be focusing on the calories in, calories out. You need to ultimately fix the stress, the structure, the lifestyle piece first, okay? Problem number two. Uh, just before we dive into this one, I just want to know that you're still with me. What are you getting away from this? Comment below. Let me know what, what's... Uh, comment live if you're watching the live. Comment replay if you're watching the replay. I want to know who's getting this, what value you're getting out of this, and, and ultimately that I'm on the right track. If you feel like there's something I've glossed over, please let me know. We'll go back over, okay? So problem number two, we're going to dive into the gut. And you know we're really big on this. We know that ultimately the gut governs all. If your gut house off, you're going to feel pretty terrible, right? If we can get this on track, you can move forward. You can get your body on track. You can understand what's happening. Ultimately, you're going to feel a lot more in control of which way you decide to go, okay? So the big one here is uh, we want to look at the foods you're eating, right? There's so many foods out there as labeled as health foods or bodybuilding, you know, focused foods like your oats and your egg whites and your whey proteins that are so inflammatory in the body. And the amount of times we've seen massive intolerances here, we've seen massive differences in bloating, gas, lack of energy, all sorts of things that come through because they're eating the wrong foods, okay? It doesn't matter if your macros are on track or your calories or whatever else. If you haven't sorted these food preferences and removing the intolerances, it makes a drastic difference. You can't, I can't even start to tell you how many times I've seen people going into like a photo shoot prep, a bodybuilding prep, or simply just trying to drop, you know, five, 10 kilos. And they're told that they need to eat chicken, they need to eat fish, they need to add this broccoli in, but they don't use it very well. They hate fish. They can't even, you know, they don't even like the smell. That's going to make a massive difference on how our body digests that food. You've got to really start to look at this awareness and bring in this, this decision, this this understanding around if I don't feel good on this food, my body doesn't really digest this well. It's gonna have a very different response, right? It's really interesting how far this goes. Like if I give you a smoothie and I tell you it's amazing, it's got all these nutrients in it, tastes fantastic, and it's gonna do wonders for your gut, 
your body is literally going to digest it differently than if I give you a sa that same smoothie and tell you that it's full of fats and sugars and salts and it tastes, it, 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 uh, it's going to make you fat overnight type thing. You're going to digest things differently, right? So if you have this, if you don't like a food and you're, oh God, I have to eat this again, your body's, the way your body digests that's going to be very different. The other part to that is if it's a food you've always been eating, right? I, I'm a big fan of simplicity. I'm a big fan of setting up a nutrition program that really fits your structure but if you've had eggs for breakfast for the last you know six years or even six months you'll notice that you start to build intolerances as to this okay if you don't rotate around your protein and fat sources especially you'll notice that these intolerances start coming in and if you don't start to really sort out these underlying issues deeper in the gut with making sure things are functioning you're absorbing these foods for more and obviously the digestive stuff we're going to go into uh, it's really not going to be on your side, right? So if we can get that sorted, really know that we're, we're underlying that this gut health is there, it's going to make a big difference to how we're able to digest foods, okay? Another part to this with the digestive support is a really interesting part when it comes to people going on like a keto diet or bringing in these diets that are drastically different is they might feel good for six weeks and then they start feeling they're constipated. They start feeling like their bowel movements are irregular. They start feeling like they're not feeling as good. Whatever that is, right, we need to understand that digestive support is a really essential part of today's culture, today's way of eating, and ultimately making sure we're ultimately digesting that food properly. If you're over 35, 40, you're going to typically be quite low in some of these enzymes and maybe the, the bile production for your pancreas. This sort of stuff is really, really useful, especially that pancreas excreting the bile will make a big, big difference in your body's ability to use fats. And if you're not using fats properly, I guarantee it's gonna come into your hormones too. So that's a really, really important part. Okay, the other part of that is obviously diving into hormones itself, right? So another issue that we're diving into from the bulking versus cutting is if, you, if you're focusing on putting, bringing up these calories and trying to put muscle on before you drop fat, you're ultimately setting yourself up for failure, right? Because if your body fat's not in the right uh, range first, then ultimately your estrogen is going to be up, your insulin sensitivity is going to be up, and all these other mechanisms in the body are going to be not in a favorable position for you to be able to drop body fat further, right? So if you're, in a, if you're in a decision right now of like, yes, I want to put muscle on and I want to drop body fat, what I'm trying to get you to do at the end of the day is understand that it's not that calories in, calories out. It's also, ultimately, it has to start with a health base. It has to start with that health foundation. And then you can build performance on top regardless of what that is, okay? So what is part of that health foundation? It has to be your gut health. It has to be your hormones. It has to be your, your stress. It has to be this base knowledge of really underlying what's going on first, okay? So if you're setting yourself, you, you, if your body fat is not under 15% for a male or under sort of 20, 22 for a female, you shouldn't be trying to focus on building muscle and increasing your calories or your overall you know, amount of food you eat, unless your body fat is under that range, okay? If it is above the first thing you have to focus, and regardless, even if your body fat was in the right range, it's funny how some of the guys that actually even look good on the outside feel terrible on the inside. Their body's not working the way it should, and ultimately they're not progressing, not, not putting muscle on, because they haven't got this health base sorted. If you have high toxicity in the body, you will hold on to body fat. And that's what I was talking about for in regards to, you know, the calories in, calories out. Like if you drop calories down uh, for, for a short time, obviously it's not going to be particularly sustainable, but for 80% for of people, it might work, right? For that 20%, that's where it's really interesting is because you've got that high toxic load in the body, typically that's where your body becomes quite stubborn and holding on to that body fat because toxins are held in fat okay that's why we're really really big with our clients about what fats you use in your diet what fats you cook with right olive oil is great as a dressing but it's not necessarily good as as something to cook with right it's to do with the heat and its general uh, makeup right so understanding this toxicity element is going to be a really really big thing if you find that things are stubborn if the body fat's not dropping you feel your know, muscle aches whatever else is coming through so body fat and toxicity need to be managed first if you've got high levels of body fat you know you're going to have high levels of toxicity you know you're going to have high estrogen levels this needs to be managed first okay now insulin is a really really big one right and if you you know most people know if your body fat's a little higher insulin sensitivity is usually up right what I want to tell you right now is any hormone in the body that's taken in excess, you can become resistance to, right? So this is where something as the term adrenal fatigue comes in, is ultimately at the end of the day, what it really is, is cortisol resistance, right? Your cortisol is always so high that your body becomes used to that. It just becomes numb to that feeling of cortisol. So you find it very, very challenging to rid this toxic load. You find it very challenging to drop the body fat and ultimately build muscle. 
okay? It comes in with every hormone and insulin is very much one of those. If your glucose is all over the show and you keep hitting that wall where insulin starts secreting, your body gets resistant and you, your glucose starts to get to a quite toxic level and this is where you start getting to that diabetic level, okay? So understanding that that's something not to leave behind, you really wanna make sure you manage your insulin to make sure that whether you're looking to build the muscle or drop the body fat, it's a really key player in making sure you have great body composition and you feel like you're healthy along the way, okay? So a quick one I wanna give you an understanding on this. I don't wanna confuse you, but it does give a, a nice understanding on what's really going on. Now, insulin itself is a massive hormone in the body. It's really, like I said, hormones in general are gonna govern a lot in what's going on. But you know, your insulin is gonna, is it gonna affect your mood, it's gonna affect your cholesterol and your, your cardiovascular health, it's gonna affect your increased risk of cancer, it's going to increase estrogen in males, testosterone in females, it's interesting how that's, that's different, and it's gonna decrease the liver function, which is going to be essential for excreting estrogen out of the body for men, right? It's gonna be essential for hormone production in, in, in females, right? We really wanna make sure this stuff's working. But what's really interesting with what I'm showing you today is understanding that insulin cortisol and blood sugar is really intercorrelated, right? So something that I'm, I'm not really big on is cholesterol being a marker in the, um, the blood test that people do. Obviously, doctors really swear by it, but we, we can go down that route another day, is really interleukin-6 is a really a much better marker of this, this, this cardiovascular disease and what's really happening in the body. If we can start to understand what's happening with interleukin-6, we can start to look at what's, in, what's happening with insulin, what's happening with cortisol, and ultimately improve it before things get really bad, okay? So we can go two areas here. The one thing that we work with a lot with our high performers, with people really trying to make the most out of their bodies, is really looking at that stress piece first. And I'm gonna dive into, that, dive into that next, but if you feel like your stress is high, your cortisol is elevated, you're not able to calm the body down, it's going to naturally increase blood glucose, right? The one thing that, cortisol is there for from an evolutionary standpoint is if I feel spooked, I feel scared about something that's running out of the bush, my body is going to be in a fight or flight mode. It's either going to turn around and fight that saber tooth tiger or whatever has come through, or it's going to flee because you know, it's a survival mechanism, right? The one thing our body's going to do is increase our blood sugar so that we drive that, that uh, blood to the muscles, we drive that nutrients to the muscles so that we can either fight or flee, right? That's that mechanism. It's deeply ingrained in our DNA. It's who we are. But if we are just sitting at the desk and we've been pissed off with an email or in traffic and we've been cut off, whatever it is, and we jack up that cortisol and we increase blood sugar, but we don't have anything to do with it, like we're not exercising we're not moving then simply we bring in this insulin response and if we constantly keep giving it a single it's going to become resistant right so we get the cycle of stress increases blood sugar increases insulin increases interleukin-6 which then increases cortisol again so we get this response over and over and again this is where people run into those diabetic issues when they don't really realize that you know, it's not just the nutritional aspect, it, it is very much this overall lifestyle. It is overall this, this mechanism and how the body works. This is a really, really important part of understanding why stress is so important. It makes such a difference on the body to know that if you can reduce the, the stress response, it's gonna affect everything else as well, right? So this is really what I wanna tie it into. Like, what should you do instead, right? Rather than running into these issues of, you know, counting your calories, you know, doing more strength training to build muscle, doing more cardio to drop body fat, which is flawed by the way, but weight training is still gonna be the most effective way to drop body fat. Looking at the gut, making sure things work and ultimately bringing in hormones. This is how we're gonna do it, okay? The way we focus on it at least, right? So the awareness should ultimately be around your primary health anchors. And what I mean by that, right? It's understanding that you've got four metrics that we take into account. It's gonna be your lifestyle and your mindset. It's gonna be your sleep. It's gonna be your training. It's gonna be your nutrition, okay? What area do you feel are you held back in the most? This is a bit of a self-reflection for you. And if you're watching this, I want you to ask that question right now, is understand where do you feel like is being held back most? Is it that motivation, that discipline to show up? Is it the lifestyle you feel like you're constantly on edge or you can't fit the time in for training? Is it gonna be the sleep? You, you feel like you're waking up couple of times a night no it's not normal to just to wake up to pee there's an underlying issue as to why that's happening does that something needs to be sorted is it nutrition do you feel like you're adding in quick go-to's and uh you know micro microwave meals or, or just not feeling like the food's fueling you properly anymore is it ultimately the training you feel like you're doing endless cardio or group classes and and not getting that response from your training that you really want understand which one of those do you feel is ultimately holding you back really get some awareness around that primary health anchors. And if you feel like you're really stuck, please reach out. We can dive into what we can make an aspect there. Now, the first step we do, if we're looking to drop body fat or adding muscle or overall any goal there that comes back to body composition and transform, transforming your body, is we need to reduce the stress. We need to find a way 
to, no, we're not going to get rid of stress. It's never going to happen, right? Same like toxins. We're never going to remove it. We need to find ways for our body to manage that properly. Is that simply going to be getting in? And I think this is an important part to add in that it is not, most people aren't aware of, is understanding that stress can both be mental and physical, okay? So stress could be, like I said before, it could be you're worried about a deadline, you're worried about uh, whatever this and that, you've had a fight with your partner, or it could simply be your training. So if you're someone that's training five, six, seven, double days a week, then that is ultimately a stress on the body. And for a lot of the high performers we work with, a lot of the aspects we do while we're repairing their gas and getting this health base sorted, we actually step them back with their training and they respond better because we're overall reducing the stress on the body. If you're training harder and harder and you're not seeing a response, that is ultimately a stress on the body. If you can schedule that out, you can get a better understanding of, should I do some yoga or walk today? Should I, am I got a bit more energy? Can I, am I primed to really go for a full strength session? Really understanding which way you go and really, like I said, understanding like that education, that, that, that learning, that knowledge base on the back end to know what is my educated decision I should make today rather than this is my plan and this is what I do on Mondays. If you've had a terrible sleep, you've had a stressful week and whatever else is coming up, the ability to choose and switch and to make those adjustments on an educated basis of knowing what's going on is really going to help you on the long game and ultimately is the biggest step in making sure that this isn't just a six-week stint. This really makes sure it serves you long term, okay? The second part to this is love your gut. Understand what's happening with the foods you're eating, the intolerances that's coming in. Just ask yourself that question. If you have a meal and you start to feel like you're a bit gassy or bloated or you get tired, what was in that meal that really caused some issues? What do we need to look a little deeper into to heal this gut? Because if you keep adding those foods in that are causing that bloating, causing those intolerances, you're only going to separate that lining in your gut further. And if that happens, it's bad news for, for the rest of the body because you're going to get more toxins in the body, you're going to get more stress on the liver, and it's just a, a spiral from there. Okay, So you've really got to make sure that's a big part of what we do. And ultimately, that's really a, a drastic phase that will really big part of phase one that we focus on with our clients to understand this reset and repair portion of our gut, okay? Now we've got to look at the minimum effective dose. And this is what I said before in understanding maybe stepping back with the amount of training you do, looking at what types of training you do to make sure we're getting the minimum effective dose in. And that's not simply to be lazy, that's to be intelligent. That's to be really specified with what we're ultimately trying to get out of training by looking at how can we elicit that response? How can we get the result with working harder and harder and harder than we really ultimately need to? If you can spend time with your loved ones, your kids, or ultimately you know, do something that you enjoy other than doing two hours in the gym, it's probably gonna be worth it, right? If we can focus on this is how we should train the short, mid, left and range, and really make most of ultimately getting a, a good solid training structure that's gonna have you moving forward, rather than trying to chuck in everything and hope that it's gonna work, that's gonna move you forward. Really get a good base on what's happening. And then the last one is what I went over before is understanding that stress base, right? It's going to be both physical and mental. As we start to increase, uh, if we've built that health base properly, our body's gonna be able to handle more, right? This is where it comes into both your training, it comes into your, uh, it comes into you know, how you can show up at work. It shows up in your overall, your ability to really show up as your best because you've got that base behind you. You can handle the stress. You've got that, you've got the energy to really show up. You've got that focus because you're eating the right foods that really allow you to stay sharp. Like it really ties into so many aspects of your life. And if your health, your body, and your energy are not on track, you know that that's leaning on other areas of your life. You know you could do better at work. You know you could do better with being present with your family. Whatever those aspects are that really are important to you, you really know. I, I honestly would find it very, very hard to find anyone that doesn't see that link between their own health, their own energy, their, their confidence, their own body, and how they show up every day, okay? If you can improve that ability to really show up, feel physically and mentally strong, your ability to handle stress, your ability to handle day and also perform at your best will, can, will increase, right? That's really where I'm going with this one. And if you can really tie that in in this framework we, we use with the R4 method, which is ultimately the reset, the repair, the recalibrate, and the reinforce, those are our four phases to really tie this in the most effective manner and to really move forward, okay? So the last one I want to touch on today is really just open up the spot. We've got a couple spots left for the month of June to make sure we can get clear on what the next steps should be for you, right? There's so much out there, so much different information. And if what today we went over really resonated with you is something that it could really apply to you, something that could be really helpful to really make the most of what you're currently doing or optimize what you're doing, then I'd love to get on a call with you. It's, it's a free call. We dive into the aspects of where you feel like you're stuck, 
What are those obstacles holding you back? And ultimately, we can go through and really build out this game plan with you to understand what your next step should be where and just get that clarity of focus around what your next step should be, right? If you're a great fit, you'll be invited to work with us. You'll be invited to go through our system and really make the most of optimizing this process, taking into account what I've learned over the last 10 years, investing $40,000, $50,000 worth of coaching, mentoring, failing, improving, tweaking, adjusting to really bring the best package to, for my clients and really understand what's happening, okay? If you're not a good fit, I'm, I'm happy to move you on to the right resources, the right people, or right solution for you to really move forward. And that's really the main objective of the call is just to get clear on what is ultimately best for you moving forward. If you're not a good fit, I have no problem in telling you where your next step should be and how to really serve you long-term. If it's not a good fit now and I serve you right now, this might be something that, you know, I'm, I'm, New Zealand's a small place, even Australia, it reciprocates, right? If, if I help you, I show that value, it's gonna show up in other ways, whether that be referrals or, or your own results, and you come back and have those recommendations. I know and have seen so many times that this really shows through, right? So if you haven't got a call with me, then, or if you have you know, a year, two years ago, and you wanna get back on this and see what those next steps would really look like, we'd, I'd love to get on a call with you, go through those steps. I can send through a link below, or if you wanna reach out to me, and let me know if we're the right fit. If you want to uh, ask a couple of questions before you book a call, then please do so. I'd love to, uh, you know, clear clear that next step up for you. Get clear on what you should be doing moving forward. And if any of what I said today resonated with maybe where you're at in your process, don't feel like things are responding. I'd love to book that call. Okay. Um, now I'm just going to finish up here with a couple of questions. Anything that you want to touch on? Uh, you know, what were the biggest points that you took away from today? that you felt were uh, helpful, that maybe shifted your thinking, or deeper questions you might have there, please let me know. Hey, Jacob. Yeah, absolutely. Mental stress is massive. Um, the, yeah, the big one with, with you know, training, if training through a cold or getting sick or whatever else is, is really understanding your body. Um, I personally think that uh, the biggest thing is if you're, if you're increasing your heart rate, you're circling blood, blood around your body, you want to know what's in that blood, right? So if you feel like there's an immune response, you feel like your body is, is fighting something, you're only going to make it harder for yourself if you really get your heart rate up high, okay? You're usually going to feel pretty terrible. So the unfortunate part is typically you only get to the end of the workout, but oh, that was probably not a bad, that was probably a bad idea, right? If you feel really sick, you go train and you feel worse after training or you feel like you kind of drop after that, you probably know it was too soon, all right? But typically if you're just getting sick, I would take a couple of days off. That's where I'd probably take an active recovery week, bring in your walks, bring in your yoga, just basic stretching, just that movement stuff, right? We want to make sure you're not stuck inside. You know, the biggest thing is we know that, you know, your couches and your, your technology and all these things, the, the, the artificial lights are all not particularly healthy on the body so if we can still get some fresh air we can open a couple windows we can you know breathe we can do these things get good high quality water in. it's gonna make a really big difference on the body all right it's gonna really really help but if you can take that time to get through that period where you feel like you're getting sick and then the big thing is is just managing that stress in the way of training as you build back in right so start off really low and start to build your way back up if you get in a walk you feel good great next day maybe I can do a, a longer walk or maybe I can bring in a 10 20 minute weight tra training session, whatever it might be, right? So I'm a big one on making sure there's still movement and ultimately the, the healthy habits still apply. So great nutrition, hydrating, movement, breathing, outdoor, uh, air and light will make a big difference to that, Jacob. But uh, yeah, give yourself a bit of time to let the body recover, right? If you're training, you're still sick, you're just simply extending that. Ash, what's up? Talking to the body, whether to train or perhaps just do a walk, depending on how your body feels. Yeah, one hundred percent. Just that ability to switch or make uh, adjustments on how you feel is honestly a superpower. Um, you know, so many people are, are so focused on they need to do everything. They have to, uh, you know, because today is chest day, they have to train chest. Uh, if you can just take that time to step back and and choose what might be the right choice for you, you know, is for me, I always try and make sure that, you know, if it's something you wake up in the morning, you don't feel up to it from a sickness standpoint, then, you know, maybe shift it to the next day. But I try to make sure that things are scheduled out the week before. So I know if I get to Monday and I train on that day, that's the muscle I do. If it's something that I, uh, if I'm not feeling up to it, I didn't have a night's sleep, I'll probably still get it in. I still want to make sure I've got that schedule and I'm still setting myself up for my day. I might just make it a shorter workout. And I think that's really important simply from the aspect of, I want to make sure that I'm following through on the commitments I make to myself. And that's something that's really, really big. And I'm going to be diving into my private clients a lot or, or is a, a constant communication I have with my private clients is at the end of the day, 
your ability to show up for the commitments you've made to yourself is ultimately the biggest factor in your body's ability to really, or, or your, your ability to feel confident in yourself, okay? If you're able to really show up, you're able to follow through on your word and you consistently do those little things right, it's gonna ultimately come to the big one, right? So I think there's a balance right there is if it's like, oh, I feel kind of off today and have enough sleep and I'm gonna flag it today, be careful about that, right? Because is it simply gonna be a, an awareness of now I can take it easy and I'm just gonna, you know, I'm only training three days a week because I'm slack, or is it, you know, I'm really feeling sick now, I need to actually take this day off and give my body a rest. There is always a balance, so I recognize that one for sure. Hey Heath, great to make, great uh, for someone over the Northern Hemisphere to make it today, hope you're doing well. I believe we've got a call booked in this week, so I look forward to that. Cool, Mike, Mike, Kushel, AJ and Rachel, great to see you here. Cool team, well it looks like that's all the questions we had for today, so if there's uh, nothing else, I will leave that there. Uh, and like I said, I'll put up a quick link uh, to, to help you out, um, you know, to, if, if there are any new steps or adjustments you want to go through, anything you want to adjust moving forward, then please reach out. Yeah, cool, Vaughn. Uh, it'd be great to talk to you. We'll talk soon. All right, team. Well, I hope that was helpful. Uh, there will be, obviously, the replay will stay up, uh, so you can re-watch, you know, ask any questions. I will be around to uh, answer. Uh, and like I said, have an amazing week. Look after your body, uh, and it will keep, you know, if you keep serving your body, you keep showing up and just looking after yourself how that allows you to show up in every other area really, really helps, right? Keep that balance, uh, keep that process going. See ya.